Casting Platinum Silicone. In a previous tutorial, we covered the process of painting platinum silicone. We brushed up a skin of 5110 silicone and painted it using some of the SAM32 silicone adhesive. And that got many of you asking questions about casting platinum silicone. So in this video, we're going to cover compatible mold materials for casting platinum silicone, also compatible mold releases for casting platinum silicone, and just some basic practices for casting platinum silicone silicone. And at the end of this tutorial, I'll link to some previous videos we've done, as well as a link in the video description to our video library page, which goes into much more depth about this subject. And of course, we'll also cover the process of vacuum degassing platinum silicone. So for those of you casting silicone masks, silicone dolls, medical simulators, or silicone effects props, this is all really good bedrock information to have before you start making molds and casting platinum silicones. Now, one of the first and foremost things you need to be aware of is compatible mold materials. Obviously, you need to make sure you consider this before you start your process because everything needs to be compatible. Platinum silicone is very sensitive to inhibition, and that means it doesn't cure when it touches a surface that causes it to inhibit or not cure properly. So we want to make sure we're always using compatible materials. Now, the first most common material is plaster, or in this case, we're using hydrocal. Hydrocal is a very strong part of the plaster family. Unlike a hardware store plaster of Paris, hydrocal is very strong and chip resistant, and especially for large molds, if you're reinforcing it with hemp fiber or burlap, it makes for a very strong, very good, tough mold. Now, in addition to hydrocal, here are the other gypsum materials that work well for mold applications. Of course, we have pottery or molding plaster, and then hydrocal and ultracal 30. Now, pottery or molding plaster, both of those types, those work okay, but you'll see some erosion of detail over time. Ultracal 30 is, of course, going to be the strongest of those uh, gypsum materials. Now next, we have polyurethane resin. Now I'm not going to go into all the different resins that could be used for this, but we're mainly going to stick to the ones that uh, we show in a lot of our videos. So polyurethane resin is great for a mold material. Uh, it's non-porous, so it makes a nice, it's easy to release. And of course, silicone typically doesn't want to stick to it. So it makes for a really good permanent mold for casting silicone, medical simulators and dolls and masks and that sort of thing. Uh, but polyurethane resin is very strong, very chip resistant, and for little block molds like this does not re require any kind of reinforcement fiber. Now, in addition to this, and again, this is by no means a, an extensive list of polyurethane resins for uh, mold making, but uh, the ones that we've used in our shop and some of our videos for this process are the uh, ArtCast resin, the ArtCast pourable, and the ArtCast slow pourable resin, the 1630, which is a filled resin, which makes great prosthetic molds, and of course the TC800 and TC804. Now, moving along to platinum silicone. Now, real important, platinum silicone can be cast into platinum silicone, but it's real important that it must be platinum silicone. One of the things we'll run into every now and then is someone will have a beautiful mold that they made out of a tin cure silicone, something like, say, our 5092. And the problem with tin cure silicones is they exude other materials from the catalyst that can inhibit platinum silicone, which inhibition, of course, means that it does not cure properly, remains sticky, or sometimes doesn't cure at all. So it's very important to make sure that if you're going to use a silicone mold for your casting, that you use a platinum silicone. And again, by no means an exhaustive list of platinum silicones for this process, but the ones that we've used and found to be compatible for this process are the 5110, the 5130, the 5140, and the 5150. Now, it is also important to mention that we have encountered, every now and then a customer will call and say that they used uh, a different platinum system that was not compatible. So always run a test. If you're not using what we're showing in our videos or a combination of products like what you've seen detailed in our tutorials, make sure to run a test.
Now, last but not least, in addition to those materials, the uh, gypsum molds and, of course, the polyurethane resin and silicone, we also have alginate molds. Alginate molds are also great for producing uh, just one-off castings. So in this instance, we're using the 570 alginate. And 570 is a five-minute working time with 70-degree uh, water. And this is a good general-purpose alginate for molding hands and feet and that sort of thing. But uh, mixed with cooler water, it can give you a longer working time. So we'll come back to that mold here in just a minute. Now, for the release and sealing part of the process, real important when you're dealing with porous plaster or gypsum materials that you seal those first before applying your mold release. So we're going to start by prepping our hydrocal mold with some mold soap and warm water. Now, mold soap is a, uh, a sealer that we provide that can be used to seal uh, gypsum materials like plaster, hydrocal, molding plaster, pottery plaster, and it will actually react with the surface of the plaster mold and permanently seal that. So if you're doing this on a mold, remember that once this is done, it can't be undone. So you can't do this on a mold that's going to be used later for casting uh, latex masks or anything like that. Otherwise, they will not work for the absorption process. So what this is doing is our plaster mold, if you were to look at that under a microscope, it would actually be very porous. And a dry plaster mold has lots of little micro bubbles. And when that silicone goes up against that, that has a tendency to soak into those little bubbles and lock onto the mold. So by sealing that with the mold soap first, uh, we seal that off and prevent the silicone from soaking into that plaster uh, mold surface. Now, once that soap solution is applied, we're gonna let that dry for about 30 minutes. And now we're ready to apply the Zip 301 mold release to our non-porous molds. That, of course, would be our resin mold and our silicone mold. So we're going to spray that in and then brush it. And that's an important step. Now, obviously, on a resin mold like this, it doesn't take much release, just a light spray, but it's real important that we use a brush to move that around to keep it from pooling and get everything dispersed evenly over the surface of the mold. And again, we're ready to set that aside and let that dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, casting silicone into silicone, it's really important that we don't skimp on our mold release. So we wanna spray plenty of that 301 into the mold. You notice I bent it backwards to get that down into the recesses of the mold and brush it all over the mold and then spray it again and brush it into the detail again. You don't want to skimp on this because if you do, it will have a tendency to bond to other platinum silicone. So remember that anytime you're going silicone to silicone, obviously you want both to be platinum so you don't have cure inhibition, but most importantly, you want to make sure you're using plenty of release so the two don't bond. And also, really important detail, make sure that your mold release like this Zip 301 does not contain any silicone oil. Oil. You'll notice it says there on the can, non-silicone mold release. Release agents intended for polyurethanes that contain silicone oil will act as a bonding primer can, and can actually cause your silicone to stick to the finished mold. Now back to our hydrocal mold. You notice we got these others that were non-porous released. Now that we've sealed that, it's going to behave more like a non-porous mold. So now we're just going to apply a light spray of the 301 and allow that to dry. An important detail here, make sure anytime you're applying mold release like this that you don't immediately cast into the mold. Give it at least 20 minutes or so for that, those uh, solvents to flash off and leave that, those release oils behind. Now, quick word about temperature. Platinum silicones are very sensitive to temperature. So you wanna make sure that you're always working in a shop environment that's at least 70 to 75 degrees. If it's cooler than that, it could slow things down or heaven forbid, cause cure inhibition. So remember, a lot of contaminants that might not interfere with your casting process, when your work environment gets really cold, those platinum silicones get slowed down and they're a lot more sensitive to cure inhibition. So make absolute sure your work environment is is at least 70 degrees. 
Now here for our casting, we're going to be using the 5100 silicone. 5100 is a very soft Shure 0025 platinum silicone. This is a formula that we recommend for casting dolls and silicone masks. Some of you might remember our leech man that was cast up in the uh, 5100. But 5100 is a low viscosity silicone that's great for casting dolls and medical simulators and any parts that need to be really soft. Now we're just going to give this a general flesh tone color. This is our just generic flesh tone. And just for fun, we're going to add a little bit of flocking. Now, those of you unfamiliar with this process of using silicone pigments and flocking together, I'm going to link at the end of this tutorial to one of our videos on uh, coloring silicone to go a little bit more in depth in that. So also at the end of this, I'll be linking to our painting tutorial. Now, again, this is a very low viscosity system, so it's very easy to mix the two parts together, but you want to make sure you do it thoroughly. You'll notice here that I'm taking time to scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup. You want to be real careful to do that, and it's not so much how long you mix, it's how accurate you mix. So make sure you take time to really scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing bucket, and that you're using a good, clean stir stick that has a squared off bottom that can really get in there to the corners of that mixing cup so you get everything incorporated into that mixture. Now 5100 has a very long working time of 30 minutes so there's no excuse for poor mixing. Now just to show you uh, the kind of results you can get without vacuum degassing I'm going to pour up some in a Dixie cup and then we're going to subject the rest of this batch to a vacuum chamber. So for those of you curious here is our vacuum chamber and we're using about a two gallon pot with a 6 CFM pump and that 6 CFM pump gets that air out really fast and we're trying to get that down to 29 inches of mercury. That's uh, about as much of a vacuum as you can achieve here on planet earth. And one of the things you see there is it was starting to come off the top of the uh, mixing cup. I bled off a little bit of that vacuum and uh, then closed the gate again. And now it's all good. You can see what you're looking for is for it to rise and collapse. And it'll continue to undulate there for a while. But as soon as it goes through that process of rising and collapsing, that's when you're ready to shut it off and get it out of the, uh, of the vacuum chamber. Now, different silicones, depending on their viscosity, will uh, rise to different levels. So it's always a good idea to make sure you have plenty of room in your mixing cup for the silicone to expand. I like to make sure that I have uh, no more than about a third of the way full when I'm vacuum degassing. So there's plenty of room for that silicone to expand and then collapse. Now, in our casting process, again, with this formula, we have 30 minutes working time, and you'll see that's pretty consistent throughout all of the 51 series. The 5100, the 5110, the 30, 40, and 50, all of these have right around about a 30-minute working time. So more than enough time to cast uh, plenty of silicone parts out of the same batch. Now, these silicones can also be used together. You can laminate different layers of silicones together, like you could use a really soft layer of 5100 and then use a top layer of something like 5110 to simulate something like an earlobe, where you have a, a tough outer layer but a really soft layer underneath. So when you're doing medical simulators and suture pads and that sort of thing, that's where using multiple silicones can help you achieve really high realism. Now, once we poured all of our silicone, and that includes, of course, our alginate mold, remember that we have a 30-minute pour time with 5100, and then we have a demold time of around four hours. And this is where temperature is really important. If you're working in an area that is cooler than 70 degrees, it might take a lot longer. So make sure everything is warm, your materials, your mold, and, of course, your work environment. So there we have our first part. And not the best alginate mold, uh, wiggled my fingers a little too much, but you see there we have our alginate cast complete. And always a good idea to maintain whatever is left over in the mixing cup and check that before you demold. That's a good way to grade your work and keep you from sticking your hand in silicone that might still be wet. So now that we know that that's set up, we're ready to check our little Dixie cup. And this, of course, was not vacuum degassed. We'll get back to this here in just a minute, but uh, this is a good uh, test to see what it would look like without any vacuum degassing. 
So now that we know that our silicone has set up completely, we're ready to demold the parts out of our molds. And no special instructions here other than, obviously, uh, when you're casting in the wintertime like I am here, be aware that cold slows things down. So molds made of things like our hydrocal mold here, because that's going to feel cooler to the touch than, say, the resin mold or the silicone mold, that might slow the cure down a little bit more than some of these non-porous molds. So you want to take care to demold that very carefully. And uh, when in doubt, you can always subject that to mild heat to speed it up. So, and when I say mild heat, really anything from about 85 to 95 degrees, even up to a little over 100 degrees, is plenty to speed it up dramatically. And you see that ear was just a little bit on the green side, but still demolded okay. So there we have our cast ear from the Hydrocal mold. Now remember that the name of the game for this whole casting process is compatibility. Everything needs to be compatible from your pigments to your mold material to your mold release, especially when you're casting into a silicone mold. If you're using this process, it must be a compatible platinum silicone mold. And remember that Everything in this process is a variable that if it's changed, it could alter the entire process. So be aware of that. And remember that if you start changing pigments and other materials, all of that can create a chain of events that results in cure inhibition. Now remember that little uh, Dixie cup we filled with unvacuumed silicone? Here's the cross section. You'll see that is bubble free, at least no major air bubbles. If you looked under a microscope, you might find some little micro bubbles, but I wanted to show this just so you could see those of you who don't have a vacuum chamber, you can still get very good results with no vacuum degassing. So there you have the basics of compatible mold materials compatible release agents, and of course, just compatible silicones for the process of casting platinum silicones. So here at the end, I'm going to link to our video about coloring silicone skin materials, and of course, painting the 5110 silicone using the SAM32. So be sure to check those out. And of course, as always, all of the materials we show in our videos are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. So if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, be sure to click the little bell icon so you get notified when we create new content. Thanks again for watching.